Hello and welcome back to another reading vlog. Today, what am I even saying? I sound really strange. Okay, we're gonna start this again. Good God, get a grip, girl. <laughs> this week's reading vlog, I decided I wanted to read Japanese translated fiction for a week because I kind of realized I had a lot on my TBR that I owned or was really interested in reading. And I just thought, let's just do it because I genuinely can't remember the last time I read translated fiction, but I feel like it was in the back of my head. I'm like, was that a 2021 reading goal? I don't want to go check because I don't want to know if it, if it is, if it is because I haven't done, done it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I either said I want to read more translated fiction or I just thought it and I felt it. I was like, that's like a goal I'm not gonna share. So I've got three books in this video, which I'm super excited to read. I'm gonna show you them quickly. First, we've got The Honjin Murders by Sashi Yokomizo. This is a murder mystery. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. I can't wait. I can't wait to read more murder mystery. This has got like 70, I feel like it's got like loads of books in this detective series, but only two have been translated to English so far. And this is about a locked room murder mystery, which I can't actually remember the last time I've read a locked room murder mystery. I've read isolated ones, but not a locked room one where, you know, a murder has happened in a locked room and there's no way for the murderer to get in or out. And it's about a couple who get murdered the night of their wedding. That's basically what I know about it, but I'm so excited. This is one of my like, kind of, most anticipated books to read at the moment. Partly why I'm doing this video is because I really want to read this book right now. And I feel really positive about it. I feel really excited to read it. Then next, we have got a book which is probably one of the oldest books on my TBR. Probably one of the books I've owned the longest. And that is The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa. Ah, I've heard so many good things. So if you don't know me, <laughs> or if you're new here, I love cats so much. I've grown up with cats my whole life. I've had five family cats in my life. I've currently got three. I don't really know much about this other than it's about a person and their cat traveling. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. My mom has read this and she really, really liked it. And she was like, you gotta read it. And then I never read it <laughs> like until now. So super excited to read this. And then a book I bought for this video that I've had my eye on for a long time is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Karaguchi. I've heard so many good things about this. I believe Emma from Drinking By My Shelf, I hope I'm not talking my ass here. Do you know what, do you ever get that where you're like, I'm sure that booktuber loved this book, but I'm not gonna check right now. That's just my instinct that she loved this book. And all I know about this is that it's about a coffee shop where you can travel back in time, but I think you've got to come back to the coffee shop before the coffee gets cold is the idea. So it's one that I really like the kind of like fantastical magical element of this. And it's one that I've had my eye on for a long time. So these are the three books we're going to be reading in this video. They're all super short. Like this hopefully won't take me that long. If you know, I've been trying to get out of a reading slump. I feel like I'm starting to get out of it. I feel like we're on our way out, but I feel like these will be a good way to start getting myself out of it. I am participating in the Asian Readathon uh, hosted by Cindy, but one of the rules is each book has to be by a different, um, by an author from a different nationality. And obviously these are all Japanese. So The Honjin Murders is kind of my book that is fulfilling, I guess, most of my prompts for the Asian Readathon. I'm also reading currently In Order to Live, which is about a girl's escape from North Korea. I'm reading the audiobook for that, but I'm not vlogging it in this video. So this is kind of me participating in the Asian Readathon, but only probably this book is me participating in the Asian Readathon in this vlog. So I think I'm gonna start with The Honjin Murders because it is the one I'm most excited for. And I just can't wait. Like I really want a good murder mystery and the locked room premise really intrigues me and excites me. So I'm gonna go start this now. just popped into Waterstones for the first time in like months months and it was amazing it was so good I feel like when I'm in there I'm just like photosynthesizing like I feel like, like 
<laughs> drawing energy into myself. <laughs> it's getting weird. <laughs> because I don't know, just like just being around the books and like just spending time with the books and looking at all the covers and just like chilling out like it's my happy place like I just love it so much um so I actually picked up two books which I'm allowed to do because I'm on a book buying ban other than new releases so I'm allowed to buy new releases and I haven't even bought that many books this year I would say it's like less than 10 so <laughs> so first I picked up Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir this is the author of The Martian which I love both the book and the film for, but I've never read anything else by the author. And this just came out, so I knew I wanted it. I walked in there and I was like, oh my God, are they gonna have it? And then I saw it, so I got it. And then, <laughs> then I picked up Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. This was a new release. This came out, I think in about March. And at first I wasn't interested in this really, but then I've heard so many people speak about this highly, but both of these are big books. Here's the thing, I feel like when you're shopping for books at a bookshop, there's something satisfying about picking up big books, but when it actually comes to reading them, interesting. <laughs> I am now halfway through The Honjin Murders. I'm really enjoying it. So basically, I was pretty much right in the synopsis. There's been this murder of the bride and groom on their wedding night, and it's like on the ground of the groom's family home. And so there's a lot of tension between the groom's family and the bride's uncle, because that's the only member of family who came with her. And he's very distrusting of the groom's family. And I'm very distrusting of the groom's family. But the detective, who I thought this was gonna be focusing on, has literally only just turned up, because I believe this is the first in the series that eventually goes on to happen with this detective. And it's gotten infinitely more interesting when the detective has turned up. It was interesting before, and we've had like a few clues and I'm already like you know trying to figure it out like <laughs> like Scooby and Shaggy solving a mystery <laughs> wait a minute I'm figuring this out I'm like Scooby and Shaggy I'm solving a mystery I think the detective is a really interesting character because he's a young detective kind of like fresh out of university the way that he is like examining people already reminds me very much of like Sherlock like particularly in the BBC ad adaptation like Listen, I know I'm basic, but I did love that back in the day. Like the way that he'll notice small aspects about people and like piece up together is really interesting. But we haven't had much of him yet. Like we've only had a chapter, but I really like the kind of setting of this like traditional Japanese home and the way that it's been very well explained to us. I don't know if that's in the translation. Like they've explained kind of elements of a traditional Japanese home and kind of the architecture and the floor plan, like the way a traditional home would be laid out. I feel like that's maybe something that's been added in in the translation. I could be completely wrong, but it feels like it's to explain <laughs> for people like me who don't have the clearest idea on that stuff. But I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. And yeah. I think it's really, really good so far. I'm really enjoying the writing. Oh, another thing which is super interesting the way that this is told is that it's told from the, like, the author's perspective, kind of. The author is saying that they heard about this case and like took it as they're like when you're writing a murder mystery book it's always good to get inspiration for cases and all this stuff. Like the author says they got information about the case from the doctor who worked on the case. Um, and so it kind of adds this element of like, you feel like this is all real to it, which is what books are always trying to do, right? Books are a lie. <laughs> like books are just a straight up lie. And it's the author's job to convince you that what you're reading is real and to immerse you in it. I feel like that does it really well because it's like the author's like, yo, I heard about this case. I'm just gonna write a book about it kind of thing. It's like a four star at the moment. It's like a solid book and I'm interested really intrigued to see where it's gonna go because before the detective turned up I was like where is my dude like where is what's going on here but then he turned up and it in it like got more interesting straight away and before we get any further into the video I actually want to take a moment to thank the sponsor for today's video which I'm so excited for which is Boxu. So Boxu is a premium Japanese snack box 
Oh my god, I can't wait to open it. And one thing that I love about it is that it partners with local family snack makers, some of which the businesses are over 100 years old. So I think there's really a focus on tradition and supporting local businesses. I know a lot of you in the US, and although this is sent from Japan, Boxu offer free shipping in the US. First time subscribers will get the Seasons of Japan box, which is what I think I've got. Oh my god, I'm like so excited to look inside it. But then after that, you get monthly themed boxes. So they've recently had one for their birthday it was their five year anniversary i actually don't know what this is gonna i don't know what to expect i'm so excited oh my god oh my god look at it look there's it's just like full of oh my god it's like full of snacks <laughs> It comes with this thing called the culture guide. So what this does is it includes all the snacks that is in the box and it details like their origin, the kind of flavors you can expect. So it kind of gives you a guide to all the different snacks in the box. Look at her, We've got Yuzu sake candy. Oh my God. We've got donuts. Eden is so exciting. Oh, there's chocolate. I'm gonna have the chocolate. I want the chocolate, I want the chocolate, I want the chocolate, I want the chocolate. There's a chocolate fish. Chocolate fish. Chocolate fish. <laughs> red snapper. You like catching red snappers on uh on Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Like that actually looks banging to be fair. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm-mm. Mmm-mm-mm. You like that. Mmm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my god, what is this? That sounds cool. I just think there's a lot of sweet little gummy sweets. <gasps> Look at them! Mm -mm. Have greeny. Not too sweet though. You know what I mean? Mm. That is strange. Isn't it? Like it's not sweet on the inside. It's a sticky rice dumpling. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, that is cool. Mm -mm -mm. Why is me eating literally the happiest I've ever been on this channel, OMG? You gotta show them the strawberry before you eat it. This is a white strawberry. Strawberries are harvested, freeze-dried, infused with white chocolate and cooled for a chocolate with all the flavour of a fresh strawberry. Bro, these guys are mad. Look at that. That's a freaking strawberry away from Japan, bro. Oh my god, I think that's gonna be like crazy to taste. That is very strange. Really, why? It's like an actual strawberry, and yet it tastes like strawberry ice cream. Because it's like chocolate infused. That's the most, one of the most strange things I've ever in my life. That's nice. It's really cool. Like, it's so unique. Yeah. Okay. It's like ice cream, but not cold. Like, really smooth and creamy. How have they done that? I don't know how they've done that. They're mad, aren't they? They're the science, aren't they? I actually can't believe how cool this is. I didn't think there would be this much. There's so much stuff in the box. Like, I thought there'd be like five things, but there's so many things to try. It is. It's like going on holiday without going on holiday. When we go on holiday, all we do is eat stuff and try all the food. So it's like, because we can't go on holiday, it's like going on holiday. So yeah, if you're like craving foreign food and like that feeling of going on holiday, I would really recommend it. I actually can't believe how much came in the box. And I have a code, which is MegWithBooks10, if you want to get 10% off your box you order you can use this on any size order so you can get possibly 47 dollars off your order and the link is down below as well if you use my link it'll be in the description box and in the pinned comment if you want to use my link and it supports my channel and yeah i would really recommend going and checking boxy out even if you just go check the link out and go check out their website i'm very happy because now i have lots of snacks to try okay i'm gonna go finish this Whoa, I just chucked some of the green tea on the floor. It's fine, it's in a packet. <laughs> I'm gonna go finish this and I will update you when I've finished it. I just finished the Honjin Murders and I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it four stars. The, <laughs> the ending to this, genuinely one of the weirdest like murder reveals I've ever read in my whole life. I was like, It was so theatrical. I think I understand the logistics and I think I understand it and everything, but I'm not sure that I do. <laughs>
It was bonkers. It was absolutely bonkers. I just think it was a really solid book. It did become so much more interesting when the detective was there. He was like picking everyone apart and it's got a lot of foreshadowing, like the clues are kind of like obviously laid when you look back like there's very key moments where something happens that is gonna be a clue and you know it is in other murder mysteries that i've read the clues and the pivotal moments that you look back on are kind of hidden amongst everything else whereas in this they were like in plain sight it was like signposted that that's an important moment i think sometimes it would even say like oh we didn't realize at that point how important that would prove to be so it was like telling you straight away and i actually kind of enjoyed that element of it yeah it just like it wasn't a five star like it wasn't like my favorite thing i've ever read but it was really really clever i'm really excited to read more from this author in the future but yeah like on the whole very a very imaginative murder that i don't know how any human could come up with so i'm that's why i'm so intrigued to read more from this author because i'm like how the fuck did you come up with that like genuinely how the fuck did you come up with that like i don't understand like <laughs> my brain <laughs> that's suspicious that's weird four stars very successful i'm glad that i've read it I think now I'm gonna go into Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This is one that I'm super excited. Oh my God, I just love the cover for this. I just love it so much. And I will update you probably when I'm halfway through again, because it's so short. So I am now halfway through before the coffee gets cold and I'm enjoying it. I, the, <laughs> I don't know what- I should collect my thoughts before I come and speak that way for help. What I didn't realize about this was that it's actually a series of four short stories. So it's like split up into quarters, basically. I am really enjoying it. It's like a four star right now. It's not a five star, which I want it to be. I uploaded my book haul last night. So many people are commenting that like, this is one of their favorite books ever. <laughs> and like, I don't think it's that level, but it did just make me cry. Like it did just make me sob. Like I was not expecting the end of that story to hit me in the way that it did. What's really good about this is that it's exploring kind of like human emotions and complexities of relationships in ways I've never read before and like exploring topics that I've never read before. So like without spoiling anything, there's been a lot of like um, unsaid emotions explored. That's kind of the common theme throughout the first two books is someone wanting to go back and, and say something that they, they haven't. Particularly the, the last story I read, the husband and wife one, the husband is dealing with something and the whole discussion around the way that he acts and the way that his and his wife's relationship has like worked throughout these years is really, really interesting. I hope that makes sense. Like, could very easily not make sense. <laughs> And it, it switches between this like sadness and this humor. It's written sometimes like very matter of factly in a way I'm not used to. And some of that is probably um, like the translation. So that's been really interesting to read. Like it's not flowery language, like it's quite matter of fact. And that's definitely a different experience for me to read. I think I tend to be more descriptive writing. The next day. Hello. Okay, so it's the next day. And this morning I finished before the coffee gets cold. I read it, like I read the last 20, 30 pages as soon as I woke up this morning. And that last story was so emotionally impactful. Like it actually kind of ruined me. It was a, an idea and a notion that I've never really read about in a book before and it just like killed me. Like I'm on the floor, dead, sad, cry, like, oh my God. <laughs> And I really scratched my head and I wonder, where's God when you need him? I didn't even cry that much because I was still like kind of half asleep and I read it really quickly. I was just like, oh my God, no, 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 that's not what's happening. Rather than allowing myself to like wallow in the reality of what was actually happening and be really sad. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna give this four stars as well. So being very it's successful. I really liked it was a slow book. It didn't really have much pace to it. There wasn't much plot. It was just this really slow book about these life lessons and these life stories and they're really unique kind of lessons and 
um, ideas. The one thing I would say that does dock it a point for me, I never felt like the characters were anything but vessels through which to tell these lessons. Because it's so heavy on the dialogue, there's not much description, I sometimes just felt like the characters didn't have as much depth to them and as much characterization to them as I would prefer. Um, I would sometimes get a few of the characters mixed up because they were kind of similar. They didn't have much characterization to them and I just feel like I just want a little bit more in that department. Don't be shy, put some more. Put some more. Because the lessons were great, but sometimes I feel like the characters lacked in that regard. But like a beautiful story is gonna make you cry. I would really recommend it. I really, really enjoyed it. It's super short, super quick. I actually really liked how it was these four short stories, but we had kind of the same characters throughout in the regulars of the cafe. So yeah, we're, we're, oh my God, I can't believe how successful this video is so far. I'm hoping for at least a four star from this, if not a five. I feel like cause it's a cat, it has that potential. I am gonna go now and read The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa. I am hoping for really good things. I've got to read this whole thing today. It's currently just turned three o'clock. Um, I've spent today finishing off the readings for a media law essay I have to do. Um, so I finished that off today and now I've stopped and I'm going to just read this and try and read the whole thing today. Again, it's like very quick. I don't think it will take me that long. I spoke to my mum last night about this. She has read it and she was like, it's going to make you cry. It's going to make you cry a lot. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. No, you ain't. I don't know if I can emotionally take crying again right now, but, but I'm nervous. But it's a cat. I think it's told from the cat's perspective. So like, I'm gonna love it. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Oh my God. Oh my God. <gasps> oh my God. Okay, so basically, we are following the perspective of a cat. <laughs> Half of it is in this cat's perspective. And let me tell you, I want every book to be written from a cat's perspective now. Every, all of my favorite books, I want to see them retold from a cat's perspective. Screw retellings, screw fairy tale retellings. Instead read cat retellings. Like every book just retold from a cat's perspective. Because how sarcastic it is, and just like that negative <laughs> like outlook of a cat is so spot on. I love how like negative, sarcastic, annoyed about everything this cat is. I am completely obsessed. So basically, half of it is told from the cat's perspective. And the other half, we're basically following um, the backstory almost of the cat's owner. For some reason that we don't know needs to rehome the cat. They've been together for five years after he rescued him after an accident. The owner needs to like part ways with him for some reason. We don't know why I get. That's gonna be like really sad. I, I don't wanna even think about why the owner needs to cause I'm gonna be so sad. But anyway, he's trying to find like the perfect home with one of his friends for the cat to go to. So we're kind of traveling around um, meeting some of the friends from his childhood and getting to know their stories and thus his back, the owner's backstory as well. And it's just been so interesting. I just love learning about this story, this guy's story and like the people in his life are really interesting, but also the cat. The cat is what is making this story for me. Like the, you'll have like the backstory and then the cat will just cut in like saying, this is some stupid shit or like not that. She's an icon. She's a legend and she is the moment. Now, come on now. Oh, I just love it. I just love it. I just love it. So I just. But I know in the back of my head that everyone says this made them cry. And I'm just not, a, I'm not prepared for that eventuality. I don't want to cry. Like I don't, I don't want to cry. <laughs> I just know something bad is gonna happen or something sad. And I'm just not ready for that. This may be five stars. Like I'm literally, I wasn't, I almost didn't expect it may be five stars. Like I just, I've never known how much I've wanted to read from a cat's perspective before. I can't emphasize you enough how spot on the personality is. And the cat is called Nana, which it, which the cat says, 
this is a girl's name. That's a girl's cat name. And my cat, my female cat growing up was called Nana. And so I'm just like, oh my God, it's so perfect. Because I'm just thinking of her. I love it so much. <laughs> Let me put a picture in. Because I showed you my cats now. I showed you two of them. Oh, you've seen them all before if you go back far enough. But I think in my video last week, I showed you Roar and Miko. This was Nana, an icon, a true legend. She lived to like 22. That's just like an like the icing on top. I was like, oh my God, this was made for me. <laughs> also, halfway, it only took me like an hour to read, which usually I'm like a page a minute gal. Cause I'm not always, but sometimes I can be a page a minute gal, especially if it's dense or whatever. But this reads so fast. This is by far out of the three I've read so far in this video, the fastest read. Um, and this is the longest out of all of them, but this is the one that's held my attention the best. Oh my god, I'm not ready to cry. I don't want to cry over this book. I don't want to cry over this book. I loved this book so much. Oh my God, I need to stop crying. Okay, wait. <sighs> I love this book so much. I think I'll stop crying. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I read a book that was so sad, like so heartbreaking, but at the same time, like so funny, like within two pages of each other, I was laughing out loud, which I never do. Like I never laugh out loud at books. The best you can get for me is like a, you know, not a laugh. And then two pages later, I was like sobbing. <laughs> I can't. Um... I think if you're, well, I think everyone should read this book, but like, I think, especially if you're like a cat person, you should read this book. <laughs> because the way it portrayed like the cat and the, the owner's relationship was like, it got me. Like, oh my God, I need to stop crying. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm just heartbroken. <laughs> Like the last two pages, like the last to end. I mean, I was crying for like the last 40 pages, but the last two pages are so like bittersweet and like, I just can't deal with it. I just can't, I just can't deal with it. <laughs> I start laughing at Kim when she's crying because I just can't help it. She has this ugly crying face that she makes. Um, I'm a mess. <laughs> this book was incredible five out of five five stars all round i can't believe it took me this long to read this book this has been on my tbr for like probably the longest time like probably this is what this is one of the oldest the books i've had on my tbr for the longest and i only read it now like years later it honestly is so embarrassing like how why is it taking me this long it's about a cat like i just should have known oh my god it's a film I'm not ready. Okay, that's a... I can't take that right now. <laughs> but like, oh my god, just... I can't... I'm just sitting here saying nothing. But honestly, the way that it is sad yet hopeful at the end was like unlike anything else. So, because it made you feel happy and sad at the same time, if that makes sense. So yeah five stars i loved it i loved how funny the cat was the cat was like everything i've ever wanted from a cat narrator i'll see you in the morning where we can chat about this vlog and wrap it all up <laughs> okay so that is the end of this vlog and a week of reading translated books it was such a good like reading week for me like i loved pretty much all of these this one especially killed me like i'm still <laughs> i'm still not recovered at all like i absolutely loved it five out of five stars. Probably one of my favorite books I've read this year. Just such a beautiful, 
heartwarming but also heartbreaking story and obviously I also gave Before the Coffee Gets Cold and The Honjin Murders four stars as well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you have any other translated uh, fiction that you would recommend to me that you think I would like based off of these. Also remember to check out the link for Boxu down below. I have been loving eating more, but I've been trying to save it and not like eat it all in one go. But I just had some of these um, like seaweed, Hang on, let me show you. Kind of like tempura seaweedy bits and it's so good. So yeah, I'd really recommend checking their link out and using my code if you want to get some money off of a subscription. It's amazing. It's like so much came in this box. So much more than I could have anticipated. And um, what should we say? If you got to the end of this video, comment. I have no idea what emoji. Oh my God, comment a cat emoji. Comment a cat, comment a cat, comment a cat. I want to see loads of cat emojis. Comment a cat emoji if you've gotten to the end of this video. And thank you as always for watching. I will see you very, very soon. Bye.